everybody, Andy here again out in the lovely Sussex countryside. You might be able to hear some uh, farm activity going on behind me. I'll show you where I'm walking very shortly. Somewhere where I, I've walked to lots of times. Not a, a normal scenic walk. I'm just going to walk around, view somewhere that I've shown you before, somewhere that I've been plenty of times before actually. And I'm just going to make this up as I go along. So I'm not absolutely sure exactly where I'm going to walk to. Lots of uh, possibilities, different uh, paths and that to take and we'll see how I feel. Isn't that the way to do it? <laughs> anyway, I'll speak to you shortly. There we are, walking up the path. And you might recognise what's appearing in front of you if you've watched any of my videos in this way before. Although obviously this view is visible for miles around and you can't just look at the pathway. It just appears in front of you. That is the the Long Man of Wilmington, as I'm sure you're aware, if you're a regular viewer. One thing I have noticed, though, is that the outline, it needs a clean. Because <laughs> it doesn't stand out as much as it usually does. I was in the car park, other people looking up here. Well, those people who come, park their car, walk up to the sign, which is about half a mile away, I suppose. A nice view. And uh, they just stand there, take a picture, get back in their car and disappear again. And you think, what on earth is the point of that? Yes, you've seen it, but you haven't really seen it, have you? Not until you can hear I'm out of breath. Not until you get a bit closer, like this, and make the effort. Yes, it's a bit of a climb, and it's even more of a climb when you go to the top of it, as I've done on numerous occasions. But when you get a bit closer, like this, it looks completely different. If you have a chance to get close to history, and get close to nature why not make that effort and take it you made all that effort to get here half a mile away go the extra mile as they say and you'll be right on the top as i said if you can see i'm panning very slightly um and you say to keep going on about the pre previous videos that i've done but that outline is nothing like it usually is because um what it's made up it looks as though it's chalk from a distance it looks like it's a chalk figure which in some ways it is, but uh, at the moment it's just white painted blocks, <laughs> which is <laughs> one of those things, you like lots of these things, and you get close to something and it isn't quite what you thought it was. But yes, it's an old ancient figure, no one knows how old, um, but it's not quite made up as you imagine it. I just imagine it's, it is based on the old chalk outline that was there some years ago, because that is a chalk, chalk hill, um, as you can see if I come around here, where the chalk etc is exposed. Um, but at the moment, just to preserve the outline, it's just white painted blocks, which are just whitewash or something, I suppose. And I think you need another coat of paint, you know. You see this in front of me. Once again, this has sort of been concreted in a bit, I suppose. Whether that's to preserve what was here, or maybe to actually utilise it. What this is, is a, a dew pond. And there are several of them around here, because... I suppose where this is, the sun rises behind the hill, which you've just seen. This is the long man is just literally up there, you see. If I come around here and come down, this is in the shadow of the hill, so it wouldn't get the sun too early. And dew forms, and as you can see, it's a dip. It would run down off all the grass, etc., into here and collect in these pools. And there are several of them around this sort of area. How extensive they are for Britain, I really couldn't tell, but I imagine they're obviously quite an ancient thing. And um, and the dew used to collect how much I really don't know because obviously it would evaporate over time with the sun as it is now rising behind me um, but it would collect in there and any of the, the sheep of which there are some just up there whether you can see them they would uh, they could use it and I suppose in desperation so could man as well Well, let's give you a, a bit of a panorama of this area. There's actually a bird of prey up there. I don't know if you can see it. The spot it probably lost it in the distance there. Um, but the long man is literally just behind this little hill here. And if I come round, this is one of my favourite spots. I mean, if you listen, we can probably hear a birds. There's a slight rumble of traffic in the distance, which I'll show you the view from the top of the hill later. Um, but it's put a panorama over behind this hill. There's a place called Alfriston, which I'm probably going to go to. Um, but I haven't decided yet. <laughs> over there is Furl Beacon. Anyone who's heard of Furl Beacon over there? 
and there's a that's the autumnal side of things is starting to creep in now it's really like autumn here now lovely day though and this through the trees it's quite a nice shot isn't it if i say so myself if you look very close to the train actually in the distance whether anybody can see that going between eastbourne and lewis and possibly london or brighton and that's the village of wilmington there which is a very old village and i've probably shown you the tree the yew tree in the village churchyard down there which is over a thousand years old and it's absolutely quite amazing it's held up by spikes and more or less the bits of scaffolding i think because it's so old but it's quite an amazing tree we come around here more autumnal scenes and the british countryside it's great in the autumn i do like it on a lovely day like this in the middle of september or late september actually come around this is the hill and this is where i'm going to climb you're going to get these some sheep over there there we are there's some of the the sheep that live around here great grass for them generally unbothered by me there's cows up the top as well so it's, <laughs> it's like a farm around here and this is the path that i'm going to walk up right up the side of the hill here and it's uh, a bit steeper than it actually looks morning Here we go, <laughs> steeper part of the climb. And I was only thinking earlier, and one of the reasons that I came out today, because I haven't really done this type of thing very much. You probably, if you've seen the scenic walks, I'm going on about it again, aren't I? Um, I have to get out and about, but just don't do it that much as I used to. And uh, <laughs> when you, you start to come out to a place like this and have to climb, it's a relatively steep climb, but I mean this isn't that much when you compare to what I've just seen Dean doing in the Lake District or other people as well. But shows you how out of condition you are. I went out for a run the other day for the first time in a few months and it wasn't too bad, but you do realise how out of condition you get and how quickly that sets in as well. It doesn't take long. And the lungs <laughs> don't like it too much. I'm going to push on near the top. I can see the top, but you know what it's like. You think you're near the top of these sort of things. And there's just that other little corner. You think you've made it. And there's another little corner. And another little climb. Just ahead. I can't remember if there is one round here. I'm hoping that there isn't. Whew. Still out of breath and increasingly so, but as I just said, you never know what's around that next corner. <laughs> and this little hill here is around the next corner. I hope you can see it because obviously the sun's right into it. But you can see what's worn out in the chalk, the bits of chalk. Some more inquisitive sheep down there. That's where I've walked from down there, you see. That pathway. Now do you know why I'm out of breath. But you can see how this is worn away. It's just the grass on the top. And underneath is just uh, millions of years worth of uh, tiny sea creatures which have been squashed into chalk. This is off absolutely amazing. You've got 500 foot chalk downs here, and all those chalk, all that chalk is, is tiny prehistoric sea creatures and basically the skeletal remains of them. That's a bit mind boggling, isn't it? If I go up here, This is more or less the top. I'll show you around. More sheep, there's the cows I was talking about. Going to disturb them in a minute. The long man is just on there. But as you can see, when you get to the top, the view is certainly worth bothering with. I'll come around Brighton's over in that sort of direction. Fell Beacon I mentioned earlier. See the, how flat this little bit is here. And some more rises in the distance which take us towards the North Downs. There's a reservoir there, Arlington Reservoir. Uh, railway line cuts through here. That's, that's the main road, as you might see. That's the village of Wilmington where I've walked from, and I showed you just a minute ago. And back around here. And that's back over, over this brow with this big hill here. And in the distance is Hastings. I might actually walk up there, see if I can get a shot over to the distance. I really can't remember if I can do that. But, that's what we got to. I think I'm going to have a little rest, you know. 
Well, I've just uh, come over the top of that hill that I showed you just a minute ago, and I thought, I'm going to walk that way. I've never walked this way, not in slight this direction. I've walked on other footpaths, and I found this great view. This video is going to be made up of views. I can see that, but why not? This is the view back um, towards Eastbourne, behind that hill there. I love the way those sort of contours go there, and the sun on them as well. Um, that's the view back. Eastbourne's behind that hill, and you can see parts of Eastbourne there. And if I come round through the valley, over towards Pevensey and down there is Norman's Bay where the Normans landed all those uh, in 1066 very nearly uh, however many <laughs> hundreds of years ago it was now and uh, that's a view over the bay there can you see how flat that is they call that the Pevensey levels because it's quite marshy in places and over there in the distance you probably won't be able to see it but I'll try and pan in a little bit um, right in the distance there where the hills start to rise again and that's Hastings at the end of the bay and I think that's quite a Quite a spectacular view, that. Let's hope you agree. Well, back up on the top of the hill, and this is uh, actually called Wind Over Hill, which is very appropriate <laughs> for some days because the wind whips off the sea, which is behind me, and I'll show you a shot of that in a minute, and usually comes roaring over the top of the hill down into the valley, so it's actually sheltered down there. But this in front of me is what we call a trig point, a trigonometry point, or sorry, a triangulation point. Let's get that right, but it works in sort of trigonometry, I believe, I'm no mathematician. Um, set up by the Ordnance Survey, or they're certainly looked after by the Ordnance Survey. And uh, if I had my Ordnance Survey map, you know, I'm getting in the way of the picture, um, I could actually tell you exactly how high this is, because this is, I imagine, probably the high point of this hill. Um, and the idea, if I look, I'll show you down there, but look at that. I've got a nice shot. That's Fell Beacon, which is a bit higher over in the distance, and there's probably one up there as well. The idea is to dot around the countryside in various places, usually on high points, to measure where you know the height of the land, etc., and put them onto onto maps so that you can see where you are. And there, there was a, a campaign not long ago uh, to, for people to adopt them <laughs> and to look after them, so you could adopt your own triangulation point it actually says on here if I can show you that it might say it says a uh, triangulation station ordnance survey there you go more useless information for you I could adopt this one couldn't I and I could come and look after it this is uh, pretty good this I'm <laughs> really enjoying myself on this walk because this is uh, one of those parts that I didn't intend to come to as I said at the beginning I think I had no idea where I wanted to go, I was just going to come for a walk up the top of the Long Man and then just take it from there. But I've never walked on this particular path before, uh, over this way. I've often thought, I wonder what's over there, there's some nice wooded bits and I knew there were some other paths and never actually bothered. One of those great examples as I'm always going on about, you know, you, don't, you think, yes, I'm going to do this, I'm going to go out today, and then you have a great time, don't you, and explore things. I was going to go down into Alfriston, which is down in the valley. Um, which I have been to before loads of times, lovely little village, but I might just hang around up here and uh, maybe discover some more parts and uh, I'm going to show you a view out to sea in a minute because I've come back over the top of the hill and as I might have just said, Windover Hill itself separates the land, shall we say, from the sea in lots of ways and you climb up the hill and you can't see the sea at all and then when you get to the top, I'm looking at the sea now, right over in the distance and I shall give you that great view very very shortly as soon as I've gone through this gate behind you see these gates uh, I don't know if you can see that or not probably have to edit that bit out <laughs> well I just promised you the view down to the sea this is back inland again that's Fell Beacon over there off that uh, you can see in the distance there and you quite often get a lot of paragliders jumping off of that because it's quite high and as I said the, the wind would be great coming off over the top of the downs here come round the long man is just down there, just below where all those cows are, if you can see them. In the distance, I don't know, you never know how well people can see this, actually. If I, I might actually pan in very slightly. Um, over in the distance there is the port of Newhaven. And you get ferries go out of there. Brighton's in the distance is basically over the hill there. I'm sort of halfway between uh, Hastings and Brighton here. If I come round down into the, the Cookmere Valley, Alfredston's just over the other side of that hill. And the river Cookmere runs down there, and I've been down... To the valley of that before and you may well have seen it I, whether you can see it, if I, once again if I come in there's a white horse on the hill right in front of you hopefully there that's not a very old, we've got like ancient white horses all over the place in, in especially in the south of England there's one at Westbury I remember and there's certainly one at Uffington which is prehistoric but this was actually put there in the late 1800s I do believe so it's not an ancient one but it still looks pretty good 
And if I come around there, the town of Seaford is just over there, Seaford Head. And um, if I come around here, that gap there is where um, the Cookmere Valley is where I've walked. And along here, it doesn't look very exciting from here, but what you're looking at is the other side of the Seven Sisters, um, which obviously look far more spectacular from the other side, from the seaside. And I've walked over those loads of times. And you can't see any of the hills there, can you? It just looks fairly flat. OK, it's fairly high, but there's no real contours to it as such. And then you come back round here, not quite so spectacular, back over towards Eastbourne in that direction. So uh, quite an interesting place and lots to see from just one viewpoint. That's why it's called a viewpoint, I suppose. As you see, completely unbothered by me. I think most of them are full up. Look, look at them. Most of them are thinking about having, having a little sleep, I reckon. Look, it's on the horns over there. I think, yes, I think that is a bull as well. I think we'll carry on over here, Andy. Don't be bothered, though, does he? I don't know how well you can uh, see this here, this little hill on top of the hill, because if I come round you'll be able to see that it stands out. And um, I've mentioned, I'll, I'll actually post this video uh, as a response to the video that I did about the long man and the history and everything. But uh, just in case you didn't see that or didn't mention it, this is actually a, an old prehistoric burial mound. We have no idea how old it is, and there are several of them around here a lot of the time you can't unless you know what you're looking for or you know that they're there they're not always that easy to see and we've got several these ones are called tumuli or barrows round barrows uh, what's underneath them is anyone's guess as you can see all the way that this has been contoured this is, a lot of this is man-made around here and this here with this little trees nearly on the top just along there that little ridge is uh, Another one, I think that's what they call a tumuli, it's a, a long barrow or something like that. And this particular area is built on a real ancient pathway, the South Downs Way, which comes along right the way across the downs here. And right the way along you've got all these, these tumuli and barrows, etc. Ancient burial sites. They put them on hills because they were prominent. These were obviously prominent people that were buried. And who's in there, I don't know. And uh, yeah, the thing is, there could be treasure in there, you never know, but I'm sure someone's had all that away before now anyway. And I'll give you a quick pan around, I think, as I'm here. I'm going to come up to onto this, this barrow, or this uh, tumor right here. One of my favourite spots, actually, because of the view. I'm going to go down, and then I'm up over the top. It's like walking on someone's grave, isn't it? Um, right on the top here. You can see, see that tree, you can see the way it's bent, because of the way that the wind blows. I said it's called wind over hill. And you can see that's the way it goes. There's a kestrel over in the distance. Nice place to stop and sit, think, have a look around. Another train in the distance. Got that slight rumble of traffic. And usually aeroplanes going overhead. I think the sky looks pretty amazing today. Whether that comes out in this uh, video or not, I don't know. Well, that's pretty much it, as I probably just said. I'm just going to sit up here and chill out, as I might have just said. This is one of my favourite spots, I think. We can probably all think of uh, favourite places that we've got. But so I'm up here, sort of 500 feet up <laughs> above the sea. Great views all the way around, as I've shown you. And I'm up here, you might be able to hear the, the aeroplanes in the distance. There's another one of those great places that they use for trainee pilots with light aircraft and that as well. So I'm up here, slight rumble of traffic, nothing else, about a few cows and <laughs> some sheep. <laughs> and me and that's it what a great way that's great i'm gonna sit here and uh, just enjoy the view i think i hope you've enjoyed the impromptu little walk around and some of the history as i said i should attach this to the um, original video that i did up here with more of the history etc for anyone who might be interested anyway i'm gonna leave it there thanks for your time i'll just speak to you again soon goodbye <laughs>